Today I'm back with something a little bit different. I know that I have reviewed a couple of cruiser bikes, for example, from the electric bike company in the past, and uh, I loved those bikes. I thought they were great. The quality was great. They weren't quite for me though, but now we have something a little bit different, maybe a little more stylish. It's a cruiser bike, but it's got fat tires. <laughs> This is the Cheetah, as you can see on the name badge on the side here, from a company called Revy Bikes. To be honest, like I said, cruiser bikes aren't necessarily my thing, but this one is starting to grow on me right now. The ride is just really comfortable. It's, uh, it's very upright. Uh, it's, it's kind of a lot of fun. No, I wouldn't take it off-road mountain biking and off of single track trails and that type of thing but for just cruising around it's actually a lot of fun it's really smooth it's got plenty of power it has a 750 watt Bafang hub motor and just cruising up the hills and things on the brief test ride I've done already it seems like it's got plenty of power they call it a class 3 which I assume means that it will go up to 28 miles an hour but technically it still has a throttle so I guess we'll have to look into that a little bit more and see how fast it actually goes. The really cool thing about this bike, I think the reason most people would wanna buy it is because of the looks. If you like the old motorcycle style, then this thing is pretty awesome. It's got a very unique frame. The battery is actually made inside of this fake fuel tank that you have right here. And, and this is kind of like a, I guess I'm gonna have to see what this material is. I don't know if it's a vinyl or what, but it's got kind of a soft feel to it. And then you have these matching grips, which although they look like a hard leather, they're actually really squishy and fairly comfortable. And then they have this kind of stitching on the outside and the edges just to kind of bring the whole look together. And we have this nice brown saddle that matches the rest of the bike. And it's really big and comfortable. So the whole thing just, comes together as this old cruiser style bike. And if you come to the front of the bike, you can see that you have this, this headlight on here that's just massive. It's, I don't know how bright it really is because we're out during the daytime right now, so I'd have to do like a night ride to see if this is really enough to see by. But during the day, it just looks cool as it is. Uh, and then you have this big triple tree fork that's on the front that kind of completes the whole look. I do wish, I'll be honest, that this fork was actually a suspension fork. At first glance, you might think that it is in the photos. It's not. So this is a, a hardtail rigid bike. I think that would be a cool upgrade for it. I know that would add a lot to the cost to have something like that done. But it is a fat tire bike, which gives you a lot of cushion. And obviously it's a cruiser style. You're not gonna be taking this thing off road. So certainly rideable and functional uh, and a lot of fun as it is. Now I'll be honest, one of my big concerns about this bike was that it was gonna be all looks and not have the components or the performance behind it to make it a good bike. And I was pleasantly surprised. We have hydraulic brakes from Textro right here. And we have 180 millimeter rotors. So plenty of stopping power for a bigger, heavier bike like this. So like I said, the battery is tucked inside the tank here. We're gonna pull that off in a moment and just see how does it actually come out or how is it mounted in there if you ever needed to replace it or work on it. Uh, but assuming you don't need to do that, there is a charge port right here underneath the tank. And then right in front of that charge port, there's an on off switch. So that's how you actually turn the bike on before you turn the display on. I just loosened the two bolts underneath right here. This cover is loose, so if we pull this off, here is what we have underneath. So I was curious to see if they used a generic battery or if it was something custom made for this bike. And this is definitely made for this frame. So when I talk about generic batteries or proprietary batteries, I don't know if this one is necessarily proprietary, uh, but it does look a little bit less common. It would be a little bit harder to get a replacement that mounts inside right here if you ever needed one. 
there's plenty of room in the triangle. You could always mount a second battery or replacement in here if you wanted to. Uh, but just be aware that the battery inside is definitely customized for this frame. The battery that I've got on this bike is a 48 volt, 17 and a half amp hour. So it's pretty decent size. That's gonna give us plenty of range, I would say. With a bike like this that rolls as easily as it is at the moment with pedaling, uh, that's gonna give you a range, you know, 25 to 50 miles, depending on how much effort you're putting in. So, uh, looks pretty good when it's all closed up. Our controller and wires and things are tucked in there. And it uh, looks like they're using decent connectors. So, uh, overall quality looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this back on now. And then I think the next thing to do is to show you how this thing rides, go take it for a spin, go up some hills, uh, show you how the power is like, uh, show you what the display is like. It's got a really nice color display, it looks like. And we'll see how it goes from there. To back up the other good components that I've seen so far, it actually has a very nice color display. Let's get that turned on here. Here we go. So we have the speed, and it kind of has a your speed in the center, but also a dial sort of speedometer indicator on the left. You have the wattage that goes up on the right hand side. The battery has a battery gauge that you can quickly glance at. And it's kind of small to be honest, but right next to it, it does say the actual battery voltage, which I'm always a fan of displays that show the real voltage because that's the most accurate way to tell if your bike is really charged up or how much range you got left is to see where's the voltage currently sitting at. Uh, and then if we go down to the bottom, you have the typical stuff like your odometer and your pedal assist levels. There is a power button at the top, which is used to turn it on. If we press it quickly, that does put on a headlight symbol on the screen, but that's not actually how you turn the light on. So the light that we showed you earlier, you actually use this switch right here. And the top is a, I think kind of a high beam or a bright setting. And then the bottom is a slightly dimmer setting. And then the middle is off. So the power button, although it does display a light on the screen, that actually doesn't do anything. That's done by this switch here. If we go down to the set button, that's how you change between things like the odometer to the trip meter, uh, the riding time, things like that. And then of course, down here, we have the up and down arrows for the pedal assist. And this bike has anywhere from pedal assist zero all the way up to pedal assist five, which is pretty standard for most e-bikes. This is a cadence sensor. So it doesn't know how hard you're pedaling. It just knows when you're pedaling. Uh, based on my quick test up the hill, uh, it's pretty torquey. So if you're on assist one, even the lowest setting, uh, it takes off pretty quick, which personally, I don't mind. It might be a little abrupt. It might take you a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to an e-bike. But this is a, what I would say is probably a real 750 watt motor and controller. Uh, it takes off quite nicely. So I kind of like that aspect of it. It's got plenty of power. And then on the right hand side, we have a seven speed Shimano shifter and a half twist throttle. So you can use the throttle at any time and you can use the pedal assist at any time, totally interchangeable. Uh, so really easy to ride, really easy to get used to. And like I said, very, very upright, very comfortable. Let's go take it for a spin and see how it does. So here I am on the bike and you can see the upright position that it has with the swept back bars. And there's a couple of speed bumps a little bit down the road. We're just gonna roll right over them and you'll see how well the seat works. It's pretty comfortable. Uh, I would say Top speed is gonna be definitely upper 20s. I don't know if it'll get to 28. I think on a full charge, it probably would. Uh, I think just on a quick little test, I did about 26 or so. So here's a speed bump and <laughs> obviously there was a bit of a bump there, but the seat really just soaked most of that up. So it wasn't jarring or uncomfortable at all to just bump right over that. And that was a pretty stiff speed bump, I guess you could say. Now I did mention there was a bit of a jump on the power, so you'll see we're on a slight uphill here and I'm not pedaling and if I start pedaling on assist one, it kicks in nice and strong, I guess you could say. And there's a pretty good bump between one and two, so if I turn it up to assist two, you can see that boom immediately picks in more power. Uh, so there's 
a little more of a jump than I'd like, probably between one and two. But if you want the power, then it's fine. <laughs> now, because I'm kind of growing fonder of this style of bike, the cruiser with fat tires, and everybody knows that I love the fat tire bikes, I'm considering carrying a bike like this, or maybe this bike. And in order to do that, I wanna know what you guys think. You're my customers, you're my audience. Do you think this is something you'd be interested in? Is this something you would like? I know which way I'm leaning, but I don't want to ruin that. So let me know in the comments of this video, do you think we should start carrying a cruiser style fat bike that looks like this? I'll admit I'm having a lot of fun with it. So it is rather tempting to have something like this available for Bolton e-bikes customers. Here's what I need you to do for me then to make this happen. Mm -hmm. If you like this bike, if you think it's something Bolton e-bikes should carry, then hit the like button and leave me a comment on this video saying, yes, you should definitely have a fat tire cruiser bike. If by chance you don't think we should have this bike, leave a comment anyway and let me know what sort of new things would you like to see at Bolton e-bikes. And either way, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I have a lot of new cool things we're working on in the background and I don't want you to miss them. So thanks again for watching another video from Bolton e-bikes. I'm Kyle, the owner of Bolton e-bikes, and I will be back for another video again sometime very soon.